You guys miss me? Come on, give me more, give me more, give me more, give me more. <laughs> Welcome back. Dr. Kevin Obiamanu, MD. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. Kevin Obiamanu, a practicing neurosurgeon. Welcome back. Thank you guys for joining me once again today, 10th December, 2023. It's a Sunday. I want to wish everybody Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year as we approach 2024. I wish you nothing but success. This is Dr. Kevin Manu's USMLE official professional series, winter edition. Today's question is going to be USMLE step one, biochemistry. I'm happy to be here once again, official professional series. All right, let's just get straight to the point. Right on your screen, USMLE step one, biochemistry. All right, wait, you are home. Y'all can pause it, okay? I want you to pause it, choose your own answer, before I get through the question with you, okay? Pause it right now and choose your own answer. I mean you, you watching me right now. Just pause it and choose your own answer before I proceed, okay? All right. Right, before I read the question, I keep hammering it. I keep hammering it all the time, okay? I keep repeating this and I wanna repeat it one more time, okay? Always look out for the ethnicity. Okay, the gender, the ethnicity, the age, all right? If there is no ethnicity given, that means it's obviously a patient in the United States of America, okay? So you have to look at diseases in the United States. If, for example, ethnicity is given, let's say, an immigrant from India, from Africa, from Bolivia, from Saudi Arabia, and all these countries, so you have to come into realization that the disease they're trying to elaborate is not common in the United States for malaria or they want to talk about TB okay something which is quite uncommon in the United States okay so always put that in mind ethnicity is very important okay and also the chief complaint like I keep hammering it all the time in the past lessons I have elaborated on all these points which you have to consider whilst reading the question and you have to be very fast be smart with it okay study smart all the time and read very smart so today's question we're gonna look at it right, as you have on your screen okay i'm gonna read through it first and then we're gonna solve it together all right all right let's just get right into it okay so i read first a six month old boy is brought to the emergency department by his mother because of recent onset of vomiting irritability and jaundice the infant was born at term and had been healthy until the onset of these symptoms. All of his vaccinations are up to date. He had been breastfed exclusively until one week ago when cereals and fruit juices were introduced into his diet. Further evaluation reveals hepatomegaly and abnormal liver function tests. Which of the following enzymes is most likely to be deficient in this patient? Choice A is galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase. Choice B is aldolase B. Choice C is fructokinase. Choice D is galactokinase. And of course, the last one, choice E, is acid alpha glucosidase, okay? So, can you choose the answer? <laughs> Try it and see if you can get the answer on your own. All right, before I get into it. Okay, listen, I've always told you guys to always read the last sentence first okay so the last sentence is which of the following enzymes is most likely to be deficient in this patient okay so that means they they're talking about an enzyme or they want an enzyme which is deficient in, in in this patient okay and looking at this patient the age matters a lot okay the biggest clue or the biggest way to get this question right is the age the age is very very important it's what it's a six month old baby we're talking about a six months old baby obviously an american baby a caucasian baby or it could be an african-american or hispanic baby because no ethnicity was given okay so let's assume that this disease is very very much prominent in the united states okay so it's a six months old baby which is a total giveaway six months seven months eight months it's a total giveaway for this disease okay and another thing which is also a giveaway it's gonna be what it's gonna be the fruit juice and cereals 
after the mother introduces fruit juice and cereals what happens bam there's a problem okay the baby is fine when the baby is born the baby is doing all right the baby is being breastfed everything is going on smoothly the mother is happy for the newborn baby and now after six months no more breast milk mom what does mommy want to do mommy want to switch from breast milk to her fruit juices to cereals and then bam there's a problem there's vomiting irritability there's jaundice there's hepatomegaly and all this stuff okay and let me remind you that they've given you several clues in this question the baby was born a term that is 37 weeks so it's not like a preterm baby another clue was that all vaccinations are up to date so you don't have to consider all these uh, uh, measles or whatever it is that you want to consider a viral diseases you know bacteria viral diseases okay so the biggest clue here was he had been breastfed exclusively until one week ago when cereals and fruit juices were introduced in his diet this is pretty easy right hey guys this is very easy that is a total giveaway you gotta spend only 10 seconds to solve this okay this is hereditary fructose intolerance hereditary fructose intolerance it's straightforward and most of the time it's gonna be six months or seven months baby depending on when the mother wants to switch from breast milk to fruit juices or introduce you know other food okay some mothers can choose to um, to switch from breast milk around seven months around eight months around nine months so the six months is not really uh, the exact period it could be seven months it could be eight months it could be nine months but I bet you it's less than a year okay so always look out for six months seven months eight months okay and switch into fruit juices that is fruit hereditary fructose intolerance it's straightforward as easy as that and what enzyme is that is it fructokinase or aldolase B of course this is aldolase B fructokinase is benign essential fructosuria is benign kinase is kinder anything kinase is kinder that means it's gonna spare the baby of all these symptoms like uh, hepatomegaly like jaundice like irritability like vomiting and all that okay so the kinase is kinder and adolescent B is really gonna trigger it like you know vomiting and jaundice and irritability and all that so take notice of it so the answer is choice B as simple as that now let's analyze some biochemical or biochemistry pathways okay so right on your screen you can see hereditary fructose intolerance as fructose is introduced in the baby's diet it could be cereals or fruit juices fructose is gonna break down into fructose one phosphate through what fructokinase okay that is the first step from that step we're gonna have what glyceraldehyde through adolescent B also DHAP for dihydroacetone phosphate adolescent B in color blue is galloping the yellow so as you can see on your left side but that is the function of the adolescent B but on the right side we have reduced adolescent B and what is going to happen there's going to be toxic effect so there's a lot of toxic effect on the small intestines and the kidneys the liver whatsoever okay a lot of accumulation of the fructose one phosphate so from fructose one phosphate that will be broken down to what DHAP and glyceraldehyde and then the final step is going to be what glyceraldehyde 3p glyceraldehyde 3p then goes through what the gluconeogenesis glycolysis pathway to fructose 1 6 bisphosphate or to 1 3 bisphosphoglycerate let's try and see the differences between essential fructosuria and hereditary fructose intolerance let's see the differences between uh, fructokinase and adolescent B which is the hereditary fructose intolerance okay with the fructokinase like I said it's kinda remember both are what autosomal recessive okay both are autosomal recessive fructokinase is what is benign so what is gonna happen is we're gonna have um, fructose in the urine in the blood and the urine okay this is asymptomatic whereas the hereditary fructose intolerance is very much symptomatic 
like we we just elaborated there's gonna be jaundice it's gonna be hepatomegaly there's gonna be um all these symptoms irritability and vomiting and all that okay remember it's adolescent b and only happens after the baby consumes fruit juices or cereal which contains uh fructose in it. and then remember the pathway never forget it from fructose to what fructose one phosphate and which enzyme is responsible that is fructokinase so at that point it is asymptomatic but from fructose one phosphate to dhap the dihydroacetone phosphate and then to the glyceraldehyde all needs adolescent b to break down fructose one phosphate so it's very much symptomatic and then of course atp to adp and then two glyceraldehyde three phosphate and then two glycolysis okay so take notice of this pathway that's the fructose metabolism pathway it is very very important and very high yield okay so take notice and with that being said let's look at the other choices all right choice b and choice c has been tackled all right so choice b being adolescent b and then choice c being fructokinase all right so we know the differences okay this is super high yield no matter what you're gonna meet this on the day of your exams okay so now let's look at choice a and choice d so with choice a that is galactose one phosphate uridyl transferase all right galactose one phosphate uridyl transferase and then choice d we have galactokinase like i said kinase is always kinder kinase is asymptomatic kinase is benign okay same as fructokinase galactokinase is very kind oh, all right so babies don't suffer a lot both are autosomal recessive in fact all of them are autosomal recessive hereditary fructose intolerance essential fructosuria benign galactokinase deficiency and also the classic galactosemia the classic galactosemia is the galactose one phosphate uridyl transferase they are all autosomal recessive take notice of that okay but the difference is that with the galactokinase it's asymptomatic but with the galactose one phosphate uridyl transferase whoa there's gonna be a problem the reason why it's not this answer is that with galactose one phosphate uridyl transferase even if the mother introduces formula or breast milk the baby is gonna have a problem so right from the onset bam right from the onset the baby is gonna have problems breast milk baby is gonna have problems formula the baby is gonna have problems remember the galactokinase and the galactose one phosphate uridyl transferase they all have infantile cataract infantile cataract both okay both of them have infantile cataract so we know that the infantile cataract is as a result of what galactitol right so galactitol is going to accumulate and then it's going to cause a cataract that is if you have galactose in the diet galactitol is going to accumulate and the baby is going to have what infantile cataract with the classic galactosemia, like I said, that is very severe. So not only infantile cataract, but the baby is gonna have what failure to thrive, if hepatomegaly, jaundice, all that, just like the hereditary fructose intolerance. So right on your screen, you can see the pathway, right? That is a galactose metabolism pathway, similar to fructose to fructose 1-phosphate. Over here, we have galactose to galactose 1-phosphate. All right, and what is gonna do the job? It's gonna be galactokinase just like fructokinase did the job earlier on so galactokinase is gonna do the job in the first step and then the next step is where you need the galactose one phosphate uridyl transferase okay that is gonna lead it into what glycolysis okay these are very super high yield extremely they're gonna ask you no matter what no matter what you're gonna answer one of these so take notice of it okay and finally what I would like to elaborate uh, between the, the galactokinase and the galactose one phosphate uridyl transferase is that with the galactose one phosphate uridyl transferase, you will always see E. coli or gram negative infection, sepsis. So, whenever you see sepsis or E. coli infection or any of the gram negative, especially E. coli infection, in your question, make sure that you are choosing galactose one phosphate uridyl transferase because that is associated with sepsis especially gram negative sepsis okay e coli okay so take notice of that e coli galactose one phosphate uridyl transferase and now finally choice e acid alpha glucosidase hey this is lysosomal diseases it's talking about pompe pompe disease also known as the acid maltase deficiency okay 
pump it trashes the pump okay pump it trashes the pump so the pump be what the heart cardiovascular so there's going to be cardiomyopathy and hypotonia okay there's no cardiomyopathy whenever you see heart involved or the cardiovascular systems involved then we know we're talking about the pumping and that is lysosomal diseases okay so take notice of it pump it trashes the pump acid maltase also known as the acid alpha glucosidase okay so hypotonia cardiomyopathy that is absent here in this patient okay so with the hereditary fructosuria conclusively 20 to 30 minutes after the introduction 20 to 30 minutes after introduction of cereals and what fructose your baby is gonna have problems so symptoms are gonna pop out real fast just 20 to 30 minutes after the introduction of fructose or cereals or fruits whatsoever these four enzymes elaborated today are very important super high yield you're gonna no matter what you're gonna see it on the day of your exams take notice okay you cannot run away from this okay you you either gonna meet one or two okay you're gonna solve one or two of it okay so take notice of what hereditary fructose intolerance to fructokinase deficiency okay which is the essential fructosuria or the galactose one phosphate uridyl transferase be the classic galactosemia where you have your galactitol accumulation on the lens causing infantile what cataract same as the galactokinase also infantile cataract okay deposition on the lens and then acid alpha glucosidase they ask that too but that is different scenario whereby the pumps are involved the pumps meaning the heart the human heart is involved causing what cardiomyopathy and then hypotonia okay so without further ado thanks for joining me today it's been fun okay <laughs> so until then uh -oh. Merry Christmas and a happy new year it's been great having you again and thank you all for joining me. Zai Jin. Arigato. Bye bye. See ya. Steady smart, okay? All right. Bye for now. Thank you. Wow. Hello, family. This is Dr. Kevin Obiamanu, MD. Y'all welcome to my channel. Subscribe, like, comment, and share. And God bless. Thank you.